Hey guys. <clears throat> hey guys, welcome back to Everlasting Summer. I am feeling quite better. I am pretty tired though. I just woke up from a nap, so let's get day five going. We ran. Ran with the last of our strength. Like those who run for their precious lives. Like a doomed person, knowing that there is no hope to save his life, will still fight the inevitable the blah blah in his own fate. Barely managed to close the heavy metal door behind me. I have no idea how deep this bomb shelter is, or if it's able to withstand a nuclear blast. But we had no other place to hide. She gripped my hand tight. Don't be afraid. Bits of the ceiling were falling and walls were shaking. I was prepared for the worst. But the de but death is the kind of thing that you can't even ever be prepared for. But suddenly, complete silence fell. It rang even louder than the explosions. Maybe it's time to say goodbye. She was whimpering. I wanted to comfort her somehow, but realized that there is nothing I could do. Yes, you know I. A horrible bang almost split my eardrums. It seems that I'm under a piece of collapsed ceiling, but I don't feel any pain. All I want is to not let her go. Mm, nice black screen. Okay, here we go. I'm awake. I woke up in cold sweat. A short of breath and gasping for air. It took me some time to come to my senses. It was a dream. It was just a dream. My questioning mind, however, refused to believe it. But who was that girl with me there? I didn't want to let go of her hand so desperately. Sadly, I couldn't recall her at all. The clocks were showing a few minutes past ten. I slowly came to my senses as reality started to stake out its claim on my mind. My stomach foully growled. Alright, war is war, but lunch should be served in due time. It turned out that Olga wasn't here. She must have decided not to wake me up. Well, things go out to our camp leader for this. After yesterday's adventures, I had, had to have a rest. Last night was remained a blurry memory which I really didn't want to think about. It was now more, now more important to find something to eat and to wash myself. Exactly, because a pioneer must always be clean and tidy. Though I would agree with this principle even if I wasn't a pioneer, and as a matter of fact, I'm not. On my way to the wash stands, I met Electronic. He started to wave his hands and ran up to me. Good morning. Thanks for finding Shurik. Without him, I don't even. It's nothing. I was a bit embarrassed. No, really. Don't be so shy. The country must be proud of its heroes. And what about Shurik? How did he look this morning? Is he alright? As of yesterday's craziness, I thought such a question was completely valid. Yes, absolutely. The only thing is that he can't remember anything. Can't he? I wasn't surprised at all. He says that he went to abandoned camp yesterday and then woke up in his bed in the morning. I mean, he remembers nothing between those two events. I see. Alright then. You missed breakfast, right? Come to our club. We'll feed you. I have something special. Electronics smiled in a conspirational, tolerable blah, blah, way. Thanks. I'll come, probably. I had to wash myself first anyway. We'll be waiting. He waved at me and left to carry out his own business. There was nobody near the wash stands. The water turned out surprisingly warm today. It's been warmed up already, I guess. Having my face washed, I realized that it won't be easy to wash the rest of my body here. Maybe I should go to the showers. But since there's nobody here, I turned the tap in such a way so streaming... So water streamed parallel to the ground and started to take off my clothes. And what if somebody sees me? Well, I'll rinse and dry myself quickly and put on my clothes. The water which seemed warm on my hands and face felt bone chillingly cold on my body. The whole washing process took no longer than 10 seconds. I started to wipe myself quickly afterwards. But I didn't manage to finish anyway. There were voices coming from the direction of the footpath. The only solution came to me in a split second. I grabbed my clothes and dashed into the bushes. A moment later, Elisa and Yolanda appeared next near the wash stands. You could have done it by yourself. Why did you bring me here? Is it a big deal for you? Fine, let me. I peered at them and noticed that they were both covered in red paint. 
What a surprise. I wonder how they managed that. Alisa opened the valve and started to rub Yohanna's back. Take off your bra. Well, what if somebody sees us? What? Is there anything to see? She grinned. Okay, just be quick. It was true that there wasn't much to look at, but even so I stared at the gar girls narrowly. It was a pity that they were standing with their backs to me. A minute later, Lisa managed to wash off all the paint. I'm done. Thanks. You're welcome. At least I replied lazily. Listen, let me try on yours. She pointed at Elisa's bra. It won't fit you for sure. Well, I'll have to try anyway. But out here, there's nobody here, right? You know, I looked my way and smiled archly. I was absolutely sure she couldn't see me in these bushes, but enough of this nonsense. Then when I wasn't listening to her anymore, I grabbed Elisa's bra with the dexterous move instead. Now to confess, I had something to look at. I watched the two girls chase one another around the washstands with batted breath. Lisa covered her breast with her hands so I could barely see anything at all. I leaned forward and stumbled over a stone, falling out the bushes. Lisa and Yolanda stood frozen staring at me. I tried to cover my nudity with my guilty face. The blah 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 lasted for a few seconds. Then Elisa took her shirt and somehow put it on in an instant. You, you. Her face gone from red to purple. It looked like she would explode in a nuclear blast any second. The only thing I wanted was to dis disintegrate into atoms and get as far from the epicenter as possible. Or epicenter. He was sitting there the whole time. She, so she noticed me then. You, you, and I, well, I accidentally, if you know what I mean. Elisa rushed at me. Covering my butt with one hand and holding my clothes with the other, I ran in the woods. It seemed the best solution to me at the time, as showing up naked in the middle of the camp, accompanied by two screaming girls, wasn't a good idea. I ran without looking back and stopped a few minutes later to catch my breath. It seemed there was no pursuit, so I managed to save myself. At the last at the, at the cost of lacerated, scratched, bleeding feet, as I had no time to put on my boots, I sat on the tree step inside. Sometime later, having stressed already, I left the forest. I need to decide what to do next. My feet are hurting, so I should go straight to the infirmary. But on the other hand, my stomach isn't going to wait either. Maybe I should accept electronics invitation. Or head to the canteen in hope of finding something left to eat there. Okay, what's the guide say? Clubhouse. Oh, I was desperately hungry. I always took good care of my health, and even better at times when something hurts, starts to hurt badly. Now I was able to walk, and my feet weren't even hurting much. So my feet will heal up eventually while my hunger can't wait. I had to take advantage of electronics invitation. In the end, knowing the local pioneers, it was smart to assume that there wasn't even a piece of stale bread left at the canteen, and the Cybernetics Club actually somewhat owe me. With such thoughts, I approached the club's building and heard screaming coming from it. I tried to listen closely, but I couldn't figure out anything. Give it back. No, I won't. Yolanda was running around the room with a coil of wire in her hands, chased by Sherrick. Guys, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but give it back. They didn't give me a bit of attention. No, I won't. Sure, completely caught up the ch in the chase. It slipped past me, almost knocking me down. Hey, Yolanda was running in circles around the room, laughing cheerfully. Whew. I wonder what she needs this wire for. Meanwhile, the head of the Cyber Nights Club was looking fine, even after yesterday's madness. One could even say she was look he was looking fresh. But this probably wouldn't help him to catch Alana. She was smaller, more agile, and faster after all. She could easily drive him to exhaustion. Hey. Yolanda ran to me and hid behind my back. Shurik in his left. Uh, Shurik in his left. Turn left to the. Wow, well, what am I trying to say? Shurik in his turn left the club, slamming the door on his way out. He was offended, it seems. Hey, what's wrong with you? You won't catch me. She looked at the electronic. He was silently observing all this silly running that stuck out her tongue at him. 
Say, man, take the wire away from her. And why didn't he in the first place? You don't have enough wire or something. You're trying to catch Lana who's hiding behind me. He moved to the right when she moved to the left. And he moved to the left when she moved to the right. In the end, I got to have this. Grab the wire from me and Lana with one dexterous move. Give it to me. Give it back. I shot it resentfully. No, I won't stop horsing around. I had the wire by my head so Yolanda with her height couldn't possibly get it. Thank you. Okay, fine. She snorted and turned away from me. Why do you need it in the first place? This is none of your business. You didn't look at me slyly. Do you want me to tell everybody that you... I shut her map in my hand and jacked her along to the exit. Okay, we need to go. I told Electronic while googling stupidly. And what did you come for? Once I started let the kick and yawn it free. Hear me out. You realized that it was an accident. Even more so, it was caused by you. I know nothing. Facts are facts. You are watching us. Aww. What would Olga think? On the one hand, I did not want to care in the slightest what the camp leader would say. But on the other, everything was against me and in my position. It would go better to not get myself in such a situation. <sighs> well, fine. Maybe we could make a deal somehow. Hmm. She started to think. I know. I anticipated the worst. Bring, you bring me that wire. But what do you need it for? I need it for my needs. Okay, let's assume I get it. You won't tell anybody? I give you the word of a pioneer. I could hardly believe her. On the other hand, it was just a coil of water, wire. So why don't you and I try? Okay, good end. It says to refuse it, so... Okay. No, no wire for you. Enough already. Then I'll tell everything. You'll tell everything anyway, or Lisa will. Ah, uh, get lost. Yeah, sure, as if it was my fault. It is. You were watching us. No, I wasn't. But no matter how you slice it, I actually was. Lisa doesn't think so. She was angry with me about a lot of things. And I'll go won't be happy either. You know what? I started to lose my temper. If you want to tell everyone, if you want to tell everything, go ahead right now. Don't forget to mention that the government's default world of depression, global warming, and the Jesus food are all my fault too. Oh, come on. Stop overreacting like that. I was joking. Joking? I suddenly realized that I really was wound up too much. Your jokes are stupid. What am I supposed to do every time? Guess if it's... Guess if it's for real or a joke. Yep. She grinned. It's more funny that way. Yolanda turned around and ran towards the square, waving her hand and parting. Till, still, you can't deal with her in a harmonious way. I sighed and went back into the club's quarters. Electronica was building something with rapt attention. Now I'm done with everything, so I thought you could give me something as you promised. My voice sounded a bit psychopathic, Nick, psychopathic, which is enough to drive me mad. Of course, I'm not insisting, but one minute. He tore himself away from his work and got a pair of buns from the drawer and a classic triangle pack of cake for be my guest. Thank you. While I was busy eating, Electronic didn't turn away from his device for a second. He was rolling the wire, which I had taken away from Yolanda, onto the coil. So what's this? An inductor and duck tour. Join our club and you'll know everything. He looked at me and smiled slightly. I'll think about it. Of course, I wasn't going to join anything, but taking into account that had me fed, he, he had fed me, I had to be polite. By the way, as I said, I have something else. Well, yeah. Wait a second. He went to the adjunct room and came back after a minute with some kind of package. Tanta da, and gave it to me. There was a big bottle of stolic vodka inside. Huh, I get it, but it's still morning. Whew, this is only one long day. Or does electronic share the motto of get junk in the morning and take the entire day off? What are you talking about? I'm not suggesting we drink it. We have to clean the optics. Clean up the optics, yeah, right. Internally. Okay. I gave him the package back. I'll go then. Come back anytime. Of course. And moment I want to have a drink. 
walking on question myself why you wanted me show why you wanted to show me the vodka in the first place. Suddenly my hunger returned again. But sure, I mailed up some buns of kefir was awesome, but it was not enough to fill me up. Luckily for me I heard a bell sound calling pioneers for lunch. The day just started and I've gone through so many things already. But I did it and now have a legitimate grounds to fill myself up. Today I was not the last one so I could choose a free table. Lunch included pea soup and mashed potatoes with fish. It was a major disappointment to me as I don't eat fish in any form and hence will get fewer calories, calories than usual. Soon Slavia and Lena came to my table. Can we? She smiled nicely. Eh? Yeah, sure. I stood up and pulled out a chair for her. Please. I was in an excellent mood at that moment. Enjoy your meal. Saying that, Lena began staring at me and continued for some time. But then after realizing how odd she looked, switched to her plate. You too. Do you have any plans for today, Simeon? Nope. I gave her an honest answer as I indeed had no plans. Except for searching for answers, but that was more like a global go. Do you want to take a boat ride to the island with us? The island. Well, I think I've seen it from the pier. For what? Olga asked us to gather some strawberries. There are a lot of strawberries there, so they're so delicious. I could imagine a taste without even eating it, just by looking at Slavia's face. Strawberries, and one of those four. I don't know, but it's indeed a great idea. Well, indeed it is. Moreover, I haven't been to the island yet. Yeah, sure. Dot, dot, dot. Within minutes, we're already standing at the pier. At the pier. Well, here is the boat. Hang on, I'll go fetch the paddles now. I was left face to face with Lena. Do you like strawberries? Well, not really, but they're tasty. So Lena smiled. I see. I don't know what to say next, how to continue this conversation. If Sabia didn't come back, we could probably sit there till the evening without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty paddles. Yeah, thanks. We got into the boat. I untied it, pushed off the shore, and tried to start paddling. And where exactly are we heading to? It's right there. She pointed her finger at the island. And the island is named the closest one. I don't know what Captain gave it such an original name. Well, the island is indeed close to the shore. Aye, aye, Captain. If only I'd known what was waiting for me ahead. I wasn't an experienced oarsman. I rode the boat just once or twice in my entire life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we were making our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. By approximately the middle of my chat, my arms hurt so bad that I just dropped the paddles to get some rest. Well, aren't there, aren't there any strawberries anywhere else? I mean, in more accessible places? But the tastiest ones grow there. Slavia gave me a puzzled look. Is that hard for you to row alone? Lena, unlike Slavia, understood everything straight away. Oh. It's nothing. Anyway, I couldn't let a fragile girl help me. The rest of the way I spent concentrating on staying alive while getting to the island. Slavia and Lena discussed something. I, w I wasn't listening. That was too much for me. At least, at, last, ah, at last, we arrived. Completely exhausted, I got out on the shore and looked at the boathouse. It seemed so far away that I felt like a first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you go. Slavia handed me a basket. It was a small island, barely 100 meters long, and it looked more like a burnt grove with even rows of trees covering its entire surface. A calm green sea spread beneath their feet with wind causing lonely waves on its surface from time to time. This island looked like a lost paradise. It's no wonder that the most delicious strawberries grow just here. We get to split up, that way we'll do the job faster. Yeah, sure. But there are only two baskets, said Lena humbly. Oh, you're right, my bad. So how are we going to split up? Go with Slavia. I didn't want to walk here alone and hope that Slavia would join me, but I couldn't bring myself to ask. Well, it's obvious one basket for me and one for you two. No, let me go with you, Slavia smiled. Okay. I was a bit surprised, but I was glad that it turned out like this. It didn't seem to take no offense at all. Dot, dot, dot. 
The reaping has commenced. The strawberries were delicious here indeed. I could probably eat them off if I didn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to the garden ones in size and a rich color, so it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Salvia was walking right beside me, as we only had one basket. I felt like a mushroom picker, looking under every shrub and searching through the grass carefully. Pay attention. An entire bunch of strawberries had been left behind. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's fine. You must be enjoy being here, don't you? You like nature, after all. Of course I do. Savia smiled. It reminds me of my home. We have similar birches there. She, gra she gazed dreamily somewhere into the distance. Look, I've always wanted to ask, what do you like in general? You look busy 24-7. It seems you have no time to rest at all. Uh, she started to think. I don't know, really. Doing a variety of activities is enjoyable for me. Well, that's understandable, but still. I like knitting and sewing. Things like that. So I took a handkerchief out of her pocket. There were red, yellow, and green flowers I embroidered, embroidered are on it. They were entangled each other in a complicated way, creating sophisticated geometric forms. Such a typical Russian handmade handkerchief. When I'm seeing it, I instantly imagine Slavia dressed in an ancient seraphim, sitting on a bench beside a ramshackle house with a crowd of plain children running around. It's quite cute. Thanks. Let me give it to you as a gift. Such a proposal embarrassed me. You shouldn't. No, take it. I looked at the handkerchief once again and put it in my pocket. Thank you. There were so many strawberries here that after a mere an hour, we had the basket filled up to the brim. It seems we're done. Yes, we've got a lot, so it should surely be enough. When we got back to the boat, Lena wasn't there yet. She didn't need more time to fill the basket by herself. Yeah, I guess so. I looked at the river. Sun sparkles happily dancing across the water surface were the only thing that distinguished it from a mirror that's how calm the river seemed. What are you thinking about? Nothing really. And you? Me? What will happen once vacation is over? We'll have to leave this camp and go back to our homes. Will I ever see anyone I meet he I met here again? Will I ever see you again? She looked at me with her eyes so full of sorrow that I couldn't think of what to say. Lena came out of nowhere, breaking the silence. Oh, you're done already. Here. She showed us a basket full of strawberries. Great. Now we can go back. And I still had Slavia's face and those words of hers on my mind. Sadness and sorrow weren't the kinds of emotions typical of her. Could she be hiding them all the time under a mask of cheerfulness? I had no answer to this question, and I knew I couldn't find one either way. Maybe later. The way that back looked less time as I tried to concentrate on rowing and ignoring everything else. My only wish was to get back alive as the first ship hadn't gone without consequences, and now my hands started to hurt after only a few sweeps of the oars. Having tied up the boat, I fell to the ground with no energy left. Savia and Lena leaned over me. You could have said something if it was so hard for you. Yes, never mind, it's fine. I'll just lie here for a bit and everything will be alright. Okay, then get those baskets to all good, please. We have something else to do. Yeah, sure. I was ready to agree with anything else at that moment. It's just so I couldn't, wouldn't have to get up. So I put the baskets full of strawberries next to me and headed to the square, happily chatting with Lena about something. The hardest part is done anyway. That's what I thought before I got up and took the baskets. After rowing, they felt like cement bags even while... Weighing barely more than a few kilograms each. The trip to the camp's leader's cabin took much longer than usual. I just up every 50 meters to have a rest. Once I finally made it, I put the baskets on the ground and sat on the desk chair with difficulty. Olga, Olga, I got presents for you. There was no answer. I barely managed to get up and enter the cabin. There was nobody there. If you don't need them, it's up to you. I laid down on the deck chair and fell asleep. I had a weird dream about a strawberry race. I was rowing about with my last ounces of strength, trying to escape huge berries that were chasing me. My hands were falling, were failing me. I could barely see anything because of the sweat covering my face. 
Blood was hammering at my temples, but the strawberries were getting closer. They were burying their teeth at me. But wait, strawberries with teeth? Semyon, Semyon. I woke up. Alko was standing beside me, shaking my shoulder. I see you got a rich harvest sitting, you. Okay, thanks to the girl's help. Okay, but that's not all. Seriously, I just was anticipating the lovely rest I was about to have. Do you even know what these strawberries are for? Not a clue. What an honest confession. We'll make a cake out of them, I see. Well, that makes sense. To honor this miraculous rescue of Shurik, and all that's all thanks to you. Whew, so much reading, come on. It was clear that this getting the strawberries wasn't the last thing left to do. My nose is running and it's getting out of breath from reading for so long. And why? Please tell me, if I'm such a hero, why do I have to organize a celebration in my name all by myself? Well, I guess. So, I have an important task for you. We are missing yeast, flour, and sugar, and eat it all in the canteen before dinner. And those with who will make the cake can't deal with it on their own somehow, I asked pitifully. Of course they can't. All of them are busy, and you're the only one in the whole camp who, is do who does nothing. While her words were partly true, that doesn't make it any easier for me now. Moreover, those words felt like a bullet to my head. So I'll write it down. You'll get the yeast in the infirmary, flow in the library, and sugar in the clubhouse. Wait, wait, a. Hey. I have no time. I'm in a hurry. Good luck. She smiled slyly and left. Of course, there are a lot of strange things in this camp, but... You see the infirmary? Okay, I can deal with that, but... Flour in the library and sugar? No, it's beyond my comprehension. I spat on the floor. I didn't want to, and I will not believe this. Tell me, just tell me you're pulling my leg. I would not be surprised if a crowd of fat green trolls would appear here right now beside me. With every one of them feeling obligated to laugh at me. So maybe to hell with this cake. I weighed my options for some time. Now if such a major plan of Olga fell through, I'd be in for a world of hurt. And it would be complicated both my life in the camp and my search for answers, which I've stopped for quite a while. It seems I have no choice. Okay. Clubhouse. It seems, feels like I've gone through more things today than on my previous days combined. That's approaching the clubhouse. I have forgot, even forgotten to think about the, how awkward it must be to so go look for sugar there. Shurik and Electronic were enthusiastically building something. They were so busy that they even noticed me. I looked closely. It was some kind of robot, or at least the body of one. Moreover, the robot was female and had animal ears. I didn't want to make up theories about such a purpose. The purpose of such a device for luminaries of camp cybernetics. Even though that design looked practically workable, I had my doubts about this robot ever being able to conquer Earth, or at least being able to do anything on its own. But they seemed to be enjoying the process more than the end result itself. And that was something we shared, even though I didn't want to admit it. On the other hand, they weren't afraid of possible or failure, criticism, or jokes. They were working towards their goal without paying attention to others, who would call it unrealistic or even absurd. Oh, it looks like I'm truly comparing them to the luminaries of the sciences. Hey guys, I agree with them uncertainly. Oh, Simeon, come in. We're always glad to see you. I was actually already inside. You know, sorry for what happened yesterday. I barely remember anything, but, well, never mind. It's okay. And what brings you to our humble abode? The electronics looked at me slyly. Sometimes I feel that he makes such a face when he knows something about the other person, something he can use in a right moment. Sugar. I need sugar. An image from an ancient video game suddenly came into my mind, where some kind of unit, like a builder or something, cried out with all of its five pixel stature, Gold. We need more gold. We got it. I wonder if that's a reference to a real game or not. Hmm. Okay, well said, Electronic calmly. Why would you want it? Man, my nose is getting rough, stuffed. I, I was just fine when I started this video, but gee, this is taking out at me. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not fully better. Well, I don't want to exit. No. I felt that I shouldn't explain to Shirk that they wanted to bake a cake for him. I shouldn't spoil the surprise. I don't know. All good told me to get some. Okay, hang on. 
Lieutenant disappeared behind the door next to the room. Why do you have sugar here? When I'm in the canteen. When the food truck came in last time, it was the last thing to unload. And given that our building is the closest one to the entrance, they decided to leave it here to save some effort. That's reasonable, isn't it? The door opened, revealing Electronic hauling a huge bag behind him. I really don't know the size of the cake will be, but that was obviously too much sugar. Well, thanks, but I don't need it all. But where will we put it? And look, I give me a surprised look. We don't have a place for it. You asked for sugar, so take it. It seemed that previous smile of his wasn't there without reason. Maybe you'll help me then? It's not far to carry. We're busy. He pointed his hand at the robot. I guess that's sure he owed me after all. He hesitated and then looked away in shame. I saw I took the bag and headed to the door. Thanks anyway. I said parting exerting myself. But I didn't make it too far. After just a mere 20 meters, I had to put the bag down to have a rest. I had no idea how much it weighed, but it felt like more than 20 kilos. On one hand, on the one hand, it was just 200 meters to the canteen. On the other hand, it was even such a distance with this pillow on my shoulder, or alternately in my hands, or on my legs, or under my arm, or even on my head, looked impossible for me to cover. And as I resigned to my move in minor spirits with prolonged pauses between them, so I could get there by night at least, I heard a voice behind me. Maybe I could help you? I saw Lena in front of me. I don't think you can. It was one of those moments when I pain felt painfully how dramatically I was, I, I was out of shape. I can't bring a hand cart. A hand cart? Why didn't I think of that myself? Yes, that would be great. Wait here, I'll be right back. She smiled and ran off the direction of the square. What would I do without her? It's good that Lena isn't always that shy and can take the initiative sometimes. I started to think. She seemed quite unusual now, with no trace of shyness on her face, and actually the complete opposite smiles and confidence. The offer of help wasn't something extraordinary by itself, but getting it from Lena. After a few minutes later, she came back with a smallish handcart. I put the bag down. Thanks. Don't mention it. She blushed and looked down. Oh, the Lena we all know is back, so I'll go then. See you. Thank you again. I saw it after her. Sometimes I feel like there are two different people living inside of Lena. But the second one, confident and happy, and sometimes even bold, only appears when she talks to me. Or am I thinking things up again? No, dude, you probably are. I thought it would be better if I could get all the ingredients at once, so I headed to Oko's cabin with the handcart. Okay, so we should go to the infirmary. I feel that I visited the infirmary too often recently. But what can I do? It's how things pan out. I saw it and knocked on the door. Come in. And then there's that the trace of sing song accident. <sighs> this day is jogging on. Good afternoon. Olga has sent me to get some. I taste slightly yeast. Ah, uh, sure. She gave me a road smile. It's just that I don't have any. Pioneer. How so? She said that. Well, I had some, but now there's none left. I even bother asking why she had it in the first place. Well, that one you worry. You can have some aspirin, for example. That could be of some use to me, actually. Where do I get it, then? I sighed. Take this. She opened the drawer and pulled out some kind of bottle. I took a closer look. It was Austin Kinko Beer. What's the matter? Beer is also a fermented product. She gave me a deep gaze. No, I will even notice. She had a point, but everything just looked so gross thick to me that I couldn't find anything to say. Are you sure? Absolutely. Okay, then. The bottle clearly went into my, to my pocket of my shorts. Well, thanks. I mumbled shyly and leaving the infirmary. Well, beer certainly could have replaced yeast. Even my limited knowledge of chemistry and biology was enough to accept this, but... Currently walking around this bottle in my hand looked like a silly idea to me, so I decided to bring it to Olga's cabin and hit it there, but I had to reach it somehow without anybody noticing the beer. I hid the bottle under my shirt. Everything went up and fine, but Slavia called me, called out to me at the square. Actually, she sprang up from behind me, so suddenly that even I gave a start. How's it going? What exactly? Your search for ingredients. Ah, uh, so you already know already. Yes, I do. 
slightly the first smile. It's going all right. I answered, trying not to give away my unrest. And what do you have there? She pointed at the bottle sticking out from under my shirt. Ah, uh, this. She got me. Ah, uh, it's nothing. I blushed with a silly giggle. It's time to go. I was almost running, leaving the square, with the puzzle slabby behind. It's great that she's one of those people who don't ask unnecessary questions. But there are people in this camp who like nothing better than to poke their noses into other people's business. Passing the pioneer's cabins, I stumbled upon Yolanda. What are you hiding there? She gave me one of her cheeky looks. I thought there was no point in denying anything, so I replied in a provocative manner. It's none of your business. I'm a cipher officer bearing a message to the headquarters. That's certainly a big message. I was carrying a bottle at, at waist height, so I was slightly embarrassed. You want some help? I'll deal with it on my own. I walked past her confidently and walked um, and proceeded on my way. To my surprise, she didn't say anything nor try to persuade me. There was nobody at Oka cabin, so I decided man specifically managed to ch stuff the bottle under my bed. Once I got outside, I sighed with relief. I really could believe that I would ever worry that much about a single bottle of beer. Like I was back in high school. It was a good thing it's safe now. Even if somebody finds it, I'll claim that's not mine. I could always think of a suitable excuse for my enormous from my enormous experience. Okay, last the library. If every other place on the cake and green list made it at least some sense to me. May at least wait what whatever. I thought hard about who would put it in the library and why, but couldn't find any sin explanation after all. Given Zinya's harsh nature, I better knock first. Open. Zinya peered at me closely from behind her glasses. What do you want? Um, don't think any way of it I need. I didn't want to look like an Indian and decided to do things things carefully. I need some flour. Olga okay, said that's here, and I understand it's some strange to keep the flour in the library, but I was sent to you, and it's needed for a cake to celebrate Shirk's rescue. Yes, I have the flour. What's so strange about it? Senya replied with surprise. At least, at that second, I felt like I'd been hit on the head with a heavy weight and lost the ability to understand anything at all. Flower in the library. Sure, that's so strange. We're in Wonderland. I'm Alice. Now I'm going to eat that magic mushroom, and I'll be back home. Hey. Ah, uh, yeah. I was daydreaming. Wait here. I'll be right back. She disappeared behind the bookshelves while I folded my hands and started waiting. A moment later, the sound of a trap door grunting on its hinges reached me. Hey, you need some help? I inquired loudly. I'll deal with it. Senya barked out to me. Seems to be in the basement, so I'll have to wait a little. Okie dokie. Few minutes passed, but Xenia still hadn't returned. I was starting to get worried when the door suddenly flung open and Lisa came into the library. She looked surprised to see me here. What are you doing? Am I not allowed to be here? I said rudely to her. At least I was clearly overwhelmed. Oh, what do I care? She snorted and headed to Zinia's table. Why are you here then? Unless she measured me with her eyes carefully and almost opened the mouth to say something. But then she changed her mind and turned away, hiding her hands behind her back. Returning the book, I blurted the first thing off the top of my head. It's none of your business. She replied with a hint of hesitation. What book is it? Look, so was silent. Oh, come on, let me see it. I wonder what Miss High Voltage Keep Away reads. It's none of your business. Her voice was even less confident. Okay, okay, I don't insist or anything. In fact, I was quite interested to find out what Lisa was reading. Moreover, I was quite amused to see a book in her hands. TV, movie, or com computer. If one were available here, all these things seemed to be much more appropriate entertainment for a girl like her. But she had a book instead. Okay, what do I do? Um, stay on guard. Curiosity killed the cat. Anyways, Elisa and that made it could quickly turn to a total mess. Plus, I still have ingredients to collect. Yes, well, I'll come back later. Lisa left the library quickly without looking at me. It got me thinking. What could this book could be about if she was so ashamed of it? Lisa, it's an extraordinary by herself. 
But at least it's a shame they're about a book. Well, what's the point in guessing now? There's no way to find anything out. Finally, it's in a deep room right now. Reaching each and every corner of the library. Grab it. I passed by the bookshelves. And beheld a press brain librarian sitting near the trap door leading into the basement with a small sack next door. Well, they might have some sort of storehouse down there. Thanks. I took the second left the library. Thank goodness that wasn't too heavy, so I carried it down to Olga's cap and without too much effort. Finally, it seemed that everything had been collected. It took the hand cart with sugar outside, put the sack with flour in it, followed by the two baskets of strawberries that somehow fitted in between. And the beer was under my, hidden under my shirt, just in case. The day was coming to its end, so I had to hurry as cake itself will need some time to bake. Of course, I'd rather just enjoy laying down, closing my eyes, and getting a decent sleep, but I couldn't just let Olga down. Indeed, after all the trouble I'd gone to, I even felt even I felt personally responsible for the success of this event. Coming to the square, I stopped for a moment to catch my breath. It was at that cart that was heavy. It ran smoothly without any noticeable efforts required. But it's just that any that Physical exploration caused me pain at me now.